killer. Yo, what's going on guys, it's Gamer here, back again with another video, and really quick at the beginning of this video, I just want to say that for the rest of the video that you're basically going to be watching right now, hopefully, because I might, I might, I may or may not be uploading this video, but hopefully I end up following through and I do upload this video, and basically this video in the background is just going to be me just probably driving around, doing whatever, and GTA 5 Online, and actually in the video I do discuss probably some stuff on Rockstar, um, Rock, Rockstar, GT5 Online, stuff like that. Potentially, probably some E3, like, hopes and wishes for what's going to happen or what games are going to be showcased at E3 this year, which is literally right around the corner. And if you guys are actually hyped for E3 as much as I am, uh, be sure to drop a like. And just, yeah, just drop a like if you're excited for E3 just as much as I am. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys watch the video or the, or the actual video I hope you guys do enjoy because it's just me kind of rambling on about my own opinions and stuff like that. It's completely unscripted. All my videos are pretty much all unscripted. So, yeah, without further ado, uh, uh, just enjoy the video. And if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you did enjoy the video and you're hyped for E3 like I am, like I said, drop a like. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Okay, so I don't really know how to get into the topics that I do want to talk about, so I'm just going to go ahead and just straight up talk about it anyways. It's just to my to the best of my ability, so I'm just... Sure, I'm just going to jump right into it, so... A couple of the topics that I, I did want to kind of just talk about whilst I just fly or drive around or just do whatever as I... as as I'm in the game of GT5 Online, obviously, and that's actually one of the topics that I wanted to talk about. That'll probably come up later in the video, uh, depend depending if the first time I actually recorded like my my actual opinions or whatever. If I if I feel like that's good enough, it probably won't. So I'll probably re-record it and actually talk about stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, or I might as well just go ahead and do it now um, because it, it kind of revolves around uh, uh, Rockstar as is anyway so I might as well go ahead and do it so the state of GTA 5 online you know uh, uh, the, the DLC is coming in the next couple of days and from the trailer that I did see it looked really good but you can already tell that all the cars and all the vehicles that are going to be accessible in the DLC are obviously going to be a lot of money there are going to be a lot of in-game current. There's going to be a lot of cash that you need to spend for the in-game currency, and it's just like I understand why they're doing it. You know, they're trying to gauge people to go over towards uh, shark cards and buy shark cards, and I feel like that's something that really shouldn't be on Rockstar's mind. You know, I feel like if they just want to put out like really good content for the game, just that way it has you know survivability as of like as of uh, as of a player base then i feel like they should just go ahead and do what people have been asking for them to do for months probably like years on end uh since i think some rumors or leaks came out like not uh, like a little while ago like literally like a like a year ago or so right uh, they should just go ahead and they should just go ahead and put out a single player DLC, you know, like that's actually something that I would totally be down to buy, you know, like so far all the DLC that has been accessible for GTA 5 has been for GTA 5 Online, and anything for GTA 5 Online is actually free, but the only difference is that you would actually only have to spend in-game currency, and like, I guess you know, the fucking helicopter, but the only, like, I guess bad thing about it is the fact that you would have to spend in-game currency to pretty much buy a car or a motorcycle or a gun to actually be able to have fun and, and enjoy it, you know? And I feel like, it's like, I understand why, you know? Like, these cars, these they're pretty much just trying to gauge the fact that, like, if you want this McLaren, it's going to cost you a lot of in-game money, and that's... You know, that's respective to the amount of money that you would have to probably cost for a McLaren in real life. So it's like, I understand it, but it's like, 
if they want to put out something just like unique and interesting and actually just fun in general without having you know people will be worried about the cost of how much it is why, why don't they just go ahead and just put something fun online so that way people don't have to worry about the cost uh, like of it you know like the fact that they made the marshal completely free for returning players from the old the old generation of consoles was something that i'm glad they did same thing with the, with the duke of death like the fact that they you know made that accessible f for free for, for returning players was awesome but of course it's gonna suck for um for people who only started you know on uh, on gta 5 and having uh, on the ps4 or the xbox one depending on what console you're playing of course and haven't played on the old generation of consoles it's like i get it you know i understand why people would be mad about it but you know they're just doing that for returning players you know they appreciate the returning players and so they're trying to just show their appreciation another thing that i am really just pissed off about about the, the gt5 online community is how toxic it is like look at this guy the guy in the annihilator like look at him i'm just driving I'm just driving. I'm I'm not doing anything. And you want to know what he decided to do? He decided to try to kill me. And he's doing a really shit job at it. He's level 210. And this is what he's deciding to do with his time playing a video game. I, I hate how toxic this community is. I hate how completely toxic this community is when you go into a lobby of GTA 5. Literally every single time I, I go into a lobby of GTA 5, literally if I'm just driving around, they'll shoot me. Why? I don't know. They just feel the need to shoot me. And that's what they go ahead and do. They go ahead and try to shoot me. Or they chase me. Or they follow me. And I could probably understand because, well, look at my level. Look at how much money I have. They're probably mad because they don't have the money that I do or, or the levels that I do. And it's like... That's not really be some, that's not really something you should be mad about. Like, just relax and just play the damn game. Have fun. Pl play with your friends. You don't have to go and be a complete dick to everybody. Like, two people are chasing after me when I'm literally just driving. Like, I'm literally just driving around, not just minding my own business. And they decided, you know what? We don't like this guy. Let's go and kill him. Like, why does that have to happen? Another thing that I hate that Rockstar has just been doing this entire time since kind of kind of basically the beginning of GTA 5 Online was the fact that shark cards are a thing, you know? And they really want you to buy shark cards. You don't believe me? Why are there vehicles... Why is there a fucking golden version of a plane that you can actually basically get completely for free? That's ten million dollars. You wanna know something else too? That's on the old generation of consoles too. But it's completely worthless. And the reason why it's completely worthless is because there are features in that plane that you can only do in first person. You can't do that on the old generation of consoles. Only on the PS4 and the Xbox One and PC. That's it. So the fact that they decided to basically just do that just so that way they can money whore the fuck out of their their fan base is completely selfish like they knew people they they knew that dumb little kids would do that they knew that dumb little kids that uh, that don't have money so they're gonna use their parents money we're gonna do that pretty much and it's like I don't blame them for doing it because well, they're a business. They're gonna know that, like, they're gonna do this or that just because they know it's gonna work. You know? And I'm not saying, like, the shark card shouldn't be a thing. Because I get why it's there. It's there for people who don't have time to be able to put as many hours as I can in a day to try and get money. But that still doesn't negate the fact that you kind of have been basically forcing it for them to basically do that. It just kind of aggravates me a little bit, and it, it's kind of just like, it's just kind of like, why? You know? Uh, leading on from, like, Rockstar and GT5 stuff and, and, and just all that crap, this isn't a rant from uh, about Rockstar and Red Dead Redemption 2, although one portion of it might be, depending on how you look at it, but Red Dead Redemption 2, 
Red Dead Redemption 2, if they basically like show off like a release date or gameplay, just anything, anything Red Dead Redemption 2 related that gets announced over at E3, literally that's the, what's around the corner like in what, in like one week? Next week probably? I'm excited. I'm excited for E3 and there are actually a couple of games that I can kind of think off the top of my head um, that, that I can kind of think of. Uh, just like I said off the top of my head that I actually like do really want to talk about and some of the games uh, Some of these games that I'm about to mention some of you may have not known that I actually play these games or I actually really like these games But now you are because well, I'm talking about it right Dead redemption 2 if they show off if they show off gameplay if they show off a release date for the game I'm excited, you know Because they, they, they must have had like so much time to work on Red Dead Redemption 2 you know, that it, it could probably come out this year, probably. Unless they, like, only just now decided to work on Red Dead Redemption 2. If that's the case, then it might come out in, in the next coming year, or the next two years, in 2019. Which I would kind of hope not. I would like I would like it to come out this year, if they've been working on it for, like, for so long now. But I don't know. I don't work for Rockstar, so I can't tell you how long they've been working for it. But here's uh, another game that I'm really excited for uh, E3 this year, and it's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, uh, earlier last year, yeah, last year, I actually finally played uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, like for the first time ever, right? I finally played Final Fantasy VII for the first time ever, just period, right? And I didn't play it on like the PlayStation 1 or anything like I, I I bought the version that was available for the PlayStation 4 But even then the fact of how much like amazing like characters and just like spells and items and just Just everything about Final Fantasy 7 was amazing that game is absolutely phenomenal Final Fantasy 7 is one of my favorite games of all time now I never got to play it when I was younger, mainly because of the fact that when it did came out, I probably wasn't even born yet, so I never really had a chance to play it. But the fact that I was able to actually finally decide to give it a chance and, well, just play it, it was amazing. It was one of the most, it was one of the most fun gaming experiences that I have ever had in my whole 17 years of living. For those of you who can't tell, I guess I'm 17 years old. So, yeah. <laughs> and some of you are prob probably thinking, you're like, well, you're only 17, so duh, 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 duh. Well, I've, I've played a lot of old games, like, growing up as a kid. Because my dad, uh, he basically just introduced me to video games. He introduced me to stuff like Super Mario 64, Mario Party, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Just really old games like that. And that's the reason why Nintendo is always going to be one of my favorite companies. Because... Because they always just come out with really amazing games, you know, that can basically make any any person of any age just have fun, you know, playing a game. Either with their son, their daughter, their wife, their girlfriend, their friends, son, anybody. Just, it, Nintendo always just knows how to make amazing games, and I'm excited for whatever they decide to put out for E3, you know? Any game that they decide to announce, uh at E3, I, I'm, I'll be excited for it, you know? It, like, because anything Nintendo is gonna be, it's gonna honestly be amazing. But, back to the topic of Final Fantasy VII Remake. When I found out that they were making a Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, you know, at the time, I, will, I haven't uh, played Final Fantasy VII, so I didn't really understand the hype, you know? But then I actually finally decided to play Final Fantasy VII. You know, when it was available for the PlayStation 4 and you can buy it for like 15 bucks, right? It was amazing. And all around, after I was done beating the game, and um, like just playing throughout the whole story, I, it made me more excited for, for Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I hope that we get a release date, hopefully, or if not a release date, just a little bit more gameplay. Because I think it's been like over a year, over a year or two, since we actually got anything fun, uh, up from Final Fantasy 7 Remake, you know, because we got a couple, we got some gameplay, we got a couple of screenshots, but other than that, Square Enix has been basically kind of hiding a lot of stuff that we have been asking for 
and they have just not released anything thus far. And E3 is a perfect opportunity for Square Enix to, you know, give us what we want and give us something, just get us all hyped for. Because I know I am. I know if I see a release date for Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm going to be excited. Another game that I hope uh, officially from Square Enix gets a release date and maybe more gameplay because like the last time we got gameplay of this game was like two years ago probably something like that I honestly don't know but that's Kingdom Hearts 3 and some of you probably don't know that I do like the Kingdom Hearts series but ever since I saw that Kingdom Hearts 2.5 was only available on the PlayStation 3 I questioned why isn't this available on the PlayStation 4 right why isn't this on the PlayStation 4? Because by then, uh, when they didn't make um, 2.5 Remix, you know, that should have already had been on the PlayStation 4, but they made it for PlayStation 3. They finally put it on the PlayStation 4, and the fact that they did that, it revitalized my love for the franchise. You know, I played uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, but I haven't had a chance to play any of the other Kingdom Hearts games. Mainly because of the fact that they were on Nintendo devices and I didn't have one and I didn't really care for playing like 358 over two days or Recoded. Um, even though Recoded was actually on the Game Boy actually, I think. Uh, just any 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 like handheld device, I didn't really care to play besides Birth by Sleep because at the time I did have, I did have a PSP so I had an opportunity to play it. But that's besides the point. I'm excited for anything Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 3 related. Why? Because my love for the franchise has been revitalized, and I just I just want to see like some more gameplay. You know, I don't I don't even need a release date, although it would be nice. But I I want to see some some gameplay, just at least a little bit more gameplay than what we were given, you know, years ago. Because Square Enix has been hiding a lot of Kingdom Hearts 3 news and information as well. You know. And I, I'll actually, if you guys are actually interested in anything Kingdom Hearts related, I'll, I'll probably leave a link in the description to someone, uh, someone's channel. And uh, I highly suggest that you guys go check out his, his channel and, and uh, also his Twitch because uh, I'm not gonna link his Twitch. I'm just gonna link his YouTube. But I find him, I find his personality really entertaining. And overall, he makes good Kingdom Hearts content, even nowadays. You know, in 2017 when. Kingdom Hearts is literally like over a, a, probably a decade old, you know. That came out in like 2005, so it's so the fact that he's still making content on the game and the series in general is awesome. But like uh, uh, that's basically just just it, you know. Kingdom Hearts 3, anything for Kingdom Hearts 3, I want to see at E3 this year, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Uh, I might make an entirely separate, different video with an official. Just like kind of wish list uh, for mine. Let me know in the comments if you do want to see that. These are just a couple of games that I thought off the top of my head. But Call of Duty World War II. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Call of Duty World War II. I'm not entirely hyped for the game. To be honest, I've given up on the series and on the community itself because the Call of Duty community is extremely toxic. Uh, and that sounds kind of hypocritical because I'm playing GTA 5 and I was just, I was just talking about how you know toxic their community is but the thing is is that you know call of duty call of duty mono warfare remastered didn't give what a lot of players wanted it didn't feel like excuse me it didn't feel like cod 4 it didn't feel like it was the game that they had played like 10 years ago right it didn't feel like that so they gave up the so they gave up on the community after that a lot of people, even before the game's release, gave up on Infinite Warfare just because it was jetpacks and in the future and stuff like that. And I'll be honest, I did too. And fundam fundamentally, the game by itself in terms of gameplay isn't that bad. It's just that the game is so heavily focused on supply drops because of Activision and they're fucking money hungry that it makes the game experience terrible. And that's why. And that's the same thing in my opinion about Modern Warfare Remastered. The introduction of the supply drops and, and Call of Duty, and again, it's supposed to be basically Call of Duty 4, just with enhanced graphics, also helped not make it feel like it was Call of Duty 4. It just made it feel like a game that is boots on the ground, but it's still basically, you know, modern Call of Duty with supply drops and stuff. It just didn't feel right. But with Call of Duty World War 2, they can completely change that. 
they can literally eat they, they can literally make me eat my words by saying the things that I was saying but knowing Activision I think they're just gonna keep going on ahead with the whole supply drop stuff in terms of what they can do for uh, with, with the supply drops I have no idea what can they add uh, like I said I can't I don't know what to tell you I don't know but if the gameplay is actually fun and if the game you know doesn't feel like it's not a World War II game, like it, like we're, we're led to believe, then hopefully it's good. But for right now, in terms of just like the community for Call of Duty, I've given up on the community. I've given up on the series. And it's really sad because a, a lot of my friends who I've met today, who I know now, I've met and play Call of Duty with them. But the fact that I can't enjoy the game anymore makes, you, makes me so frustrated. Because I can't stand the game anymore. I can't stand going on Mono Every Remastered and getting completely melted by a DLC weapon that I can't get. I can't stand getting melted by M16. You know, I can't stand having the feel of Mono of Modern Warfare Call of Duty 4, but it actually doesn't feel like that at all. It's frustrating. It really is. But that is honestly just my personal opinion. I can go ahead and go on and on with my own opinions about uh, Call of Duty and just any game that I want to see at E3 this year. But honestly, I'm going to go ahead and save an E3 wishlist video with more like titles on the wishlist for another video that can pro that'll probably come out. <laughs> that'll probably come out later this week. Uh, maybe, hopefully. Uh, maybe later um, next week or hopefully before E3 actually officially comes out or not comes out but E3 actually happens hopefully not my throat hurts I'm sorry I didn't have anything to drink so I can actually dry my throat so, so I'm, that's kind of the main reason why I'm ending off the video here if you guys did enjoy the video be sure to drop a like if you guys want to see more videos kind of just like this uh, be sure to drop a like um, and let me know in the comments if you do want to see that uh, no, I didn't mean to turn on the radio. If you guys are brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and stuff like that. Uh, I post uh, pretty much every other day whenever uh, a new episode for Dragon Ball Super and Boruto Naruto Ex Next Generations com uh, comes out every Wednesday and Saturday. Because uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's uh, I go I go by the name Gamer. I've had this gamer tag uh, or this name Gamer just period for pretty much years on end now three or four years and I started YouTube like two years ago because one of my friends pretty much uh, got me into wanting to do it and I'm just a nerd who plays video games has has fun playing video games with his friends while also talking about just anything anime related and if you guys do enjoy content like that subscribe go ahead by all means subscribe and I'm actually uh, getting closer and closer to 100 to 100 subscribers and even then I'm like one off of 90 subscribers So if you guys can go ahead and subscribe to get me 90 subscribers I would highly appreciate it and go ahead and drop, drop, drop the video um, just, just because just because you like me even though you probably don't but whatever <laughs> Anyways if, Like I said if you guys did enjoy the video be sure to drop a like if you're brand new to the channel Please be sure to subscribe for future content just like this and for also future anime content, like I was just mentioning. And yeah, I'll go ahead and see you guys later. I hope you guys are having a fantastic, wonderful day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.